Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve, who's in the practical series, Money Matters, how to make your money count for now and forever. Today, you'll learn how to avoid the monster of materialism. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We're in a series called Money Matters. How to make your money count for now and forever, for all eternity. And today we want to talk about an interesting subject. We want to talk about the monster of materialism. And maybe you're here and you're thinking, well, what is materialism really? Well, the dictionary defines materialism this way. It is a preoccupation with or emphasis on material objects, comforts, and considerations over and above spiritual values. That's materialism. When you focus on material objects and comforts and considerations, and those become more important than spiritual values, those become more important than the things of God. Now, why is the Lord so strong in his word about this thing called materialism, this love of money? Why does he tell us, hey, you guys be really, really careful because there's a T-Rex, there's a monster of materialism out there, and don't let it devour you. I want you to notice with me three reasons why the Lord warns us so strongly about materialism and this insatiable desire for more and more material things. Three reasons. Reason number one, materialism thwarts spiritual growth. Why is the Lord so strong about materialism? Because materialism stymies and thwarts and puts a stop to spiritual growth. Materialism keeps lost people from coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Lord is strong about that. That's why he, did, he, he hates that. That's why he talks about it a lot. That's why so much of the Bible uh, has to do with money and, and verses related to money. It's because for so many people, that is the thing that keeps them from coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you remember the story in the Bible of the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler was someone who sensed that, that something was not right within him. He had uh, material wealth, but he sensed that things weren't right spiritually. And his story is found in Mark chapter 10, and it says this, and as he, Jesus, was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and began asking him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Do you recognize that I'm God? That was kind of the question. Jesus said, you know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said, oh, well, all these things I have kept from my youth up. And looking at him, Jesus felt the love for him and said to him, one thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give it to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But at these words, his face fell, and he went away grieved, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus, looking around, said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. Wow. Now, the Lord, you know, didn't ever say to anyone else in Scripture, you have to sell all that you have in order to follow me. He said it to this guy. Why? Because this guy's God was gold. And when the Lord told him about the commandments, he left out. The man said, I've, I've kept all these things from my youth up. He had forgotten the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. 
And his God was gold. How do you know that, Jeff, that his God was gold? Because when Jesus told him to sacrifice that God for the true God, he wouldn't do it. Give your money, and then you follow me, and then you can have treasure in heaven. He went away sad because he was one who owned much property, and he was one who loved his wealth. And isn't it interesting how so many of us think money will solve all our problems? So many of us think money is the answer to everything. Money and wealth, Jesus said, keeps many, many people from the kingdom of God. How hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Materialism keeps lost people from coming to Christ. And then materialism keeps saved people from growing in Christ. Jesus told the story, the parable, about the sower who went out to sow. And he sowed seed. And he said as he was throwing the seed, some fell upon the road, and some fell upon the shallow soil, and some fell upon the thorny soil, and some fell upon the good soil. And he says this about the thorny soil in Mark 4, 19. It says, And the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. You can be a Christian, a true born-again Christian, and fall prey to the monster of materialism and start to put material things and comforts and, and uh, uh, the, the pleasures of this world that your money can buy, you start to put those above spiritual things. You're not laying up for yourself treasure in heaven. You have all your treasure here on earth because the material things become numero uno in your life. The book of the Revelation gives us seven letters to seven churches. It's the Lord Jesus coming to seven churches in Asia Minor, and he's speaking to these churches, and he's evaluating these churches. The last church is the church at Laodicea. It's the church in Revelation chapter 3, and in Revelation chapter 4, we read about the rapture. It's the last church before the rapture, and the church of Laodicea was a church that had so much. They were the materialistic church. And Jesus said... You guys make me want to puke. You're a lukewarm church. And he says in Revelation 3, 17, because you say as a church, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You don't even know it. Your world is upside down. You, you have the wrong value system. You value those things, your riches, and you don't really have riches. You just have the things of this world, and the things of this world don't count with God. Make the Lord sick. He says in Revelation chapter 3, he said, I stand at the door of your church, and I knock. I'm outside the church. I'm not even having, uh, this my church, but I'm not there anymore because you guys are flipped on your value system and the spiritual things, which are most important, now they've become least important, and the material things have become most important for you. Hey, materialism thwarts spiritual growth. It keeps the lost lost, and it keeps the saved stymied and sickening to the Lord. Second reason. Why is the Lord so strongly opposed to materialism? Why does he warn us so much about materialism, the monster of materialism? It's not only because materialism thwarts spiritual growth, but secondly, materialism produces unhappiness. Now, here's a really cool, wonderful concept if you understand it correctly. You know, people uh, say all the time, you hear them say this. They say, well, you know, uh, I'm not very happy in my marriage, and so I think I'm going to get a divorce because, after all, God wants me happy. You hear that a lot. And, and happiness trumps everything. But the happiness that the, the person is desiring is instant happiness. It's not long-term happiness. It's I want to be happy right this second. What can I do to be happy right this second? It's like a little kid at dinner. Eat your vegetables. No, that's not going to make me happy. What would make me happy, uh, mom and dad, is if I had a bowl of ice cream. And so we don't do that with our kids. We don't let our kids dictate what they're going to eat uh, at dinner time because they're just going to say, blow off the meat and vegetables. I'm just going to have ice cream all the time. And we know that would make them sick. God knows that the things we want that are going to make us happy right at the moment are not going to make us happy long term. Now, here's the thing about materialism. It attempts to find satisfaction apart from God. 
That's a, another good definition of materialism. I'm going to find satisfaction apart from God. And the person in the Bible and the book of the Bible that is dedicated to show us that it is impossible to find satisfaction apart from God is the book of Ecclesiastes, which many people don't understand. Some people have said, I don't even know why that's in the Bible. It's in the Bible to help us see that things will never satisfy you. Now, Solomon, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, he was the wisest man who ever lived apart from Jesus Christ. He, his wisdom, God gave him wisdom like the sand of the seashore and understanding. I mean, it's amazing what that guy knew. And that guy was rich. Rockefeller with $340 billion dollars was a pauper compared to Solomon. Solomon had so much. And Solomon, in the book of Ecclesiastes, he goes on this search, and he's searching for satisfaction, and he's searching for satisfaction in material things. 29 times in the book of Ecclesiastes, we read this phrase, under the sun. Under the sun, under the sun, under the sun, under the sun, under the sun. He said, what does that mean, under the sun? Under the sun means I'm going to look at life keeping God out, keeping heaven out. I'm just going to look at what is under the sun, what is in my world that will make me happy. And Solomon tried everything from A to Z, and he amassed so much wealth. It says that in the Old Testament accounts, it says that during the days of Solomon, that silver was as common as stones. Silver wasn't even considered much in the days of Solomon. Everyone wanted gold because there was so much wealth that silver was just like, oh, yeah, that's just silver. It's just silver. That's, that was Solomon's day. So filthy rich was he. Well, he said this, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves abundance with its income. He wasn't satisfied at all. Now, we think, you know, I mean... If I want satisfaction, I mean, Jeff, tell me again about Larry Sims coming over to my house and bringing me a million dollars. Yes, that would satisfy. If I got a new car, that would satisfy. If I got a new boat, that would satisfy. Oh, let me tell you something that would really satisfy me. How about a lake house? That would be the coolest. If I could just have a lake house, that would be so great. You know what happens to so many people that get the lake house and the boat? They quit coming to church. Because they're the weekend, oh, I gotta go to the boat, I gotta go to the lake house, and, and we gotta enjoy this, because we bought it, and, and it just consumes them, and they lose their relationship with God. It keeps them from growing in the Lord. Materialism attempts to find satisfaction apart from God. Hey, materialism, although it attempts to find satisfaction apart from God, what does it find? It always finds dissatisfaction apart from God. Solomon went on this great search and he amassed all this money, and he had all these girlfriends, 700 concubines, those are girlfriends, and 300 wives, 1,000 women at his disposal, and all the, the parks and the uh, beautification projects that he conducted in Jerusalem and in Israel. He had everything at his disposal. Hey, Solomon, how happy were you? He says in Ecclesiastes 2.17, so I hated life. For the work which had been done under the sun was grievous to me because everything is futility and striving after the wind. I, I just hated my life. I can't get no satisfaction. He was singing that song before Mick Jagger ever wrote it. Now, you can have money and be happy because you're not materialistic. Don't ever equate money with uh, materialism in terms of everybody that has money is materialistic. Hey, Job had a lot of money. He wasn't materialistic. Abraham had a lot of money. He wasn't materialistic. Just because you have money doesn't mean that you put money above God. That's why it's not money that's the root of all sorts of evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many a pain. Reason number three, materialism. It thwarts spiritual growth, it produces unhappiness, and it distracts us from our purpose, from our purpose in life. We live in an upside-down world where people don't understand their purpose in life. 
One of the greatest selling books was Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, because people didn't, they don't understand their purpose. Christians don't understand their purpose. We forget what we're here for. We forget what it's all about. Philippians 3.20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven. It's not on earth, it's in heaven. We don't, the world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Our citizenship as Christians, it's in heaven. So why in the world are we cashing all our money here and using all our money here on the things of this world when we don't really live here? I mean, we stay here, we sojourn here, but our citizenship is in heaven. And the Lord tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.20, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were entreating through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. You know, an ambassador is someone who is a representative of another country who comes to this foreign country to represent the kingdom. That's what we are. Our citizenship is in heaven. And the Lord has saved us out of this world and sent us back to the world to be a witness to the world. And that's our only business in this world. We're an ambassador for Christ. What does materialism do? Materialism causes us to lose our focus on our purpose, and it distracts us from why we're here. Now, materialism enslaves us to the things of this world. We, we become tied to the things of this world. Paul told Timothy, suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Well, when my kids were little, we taught them that little song, I'm in the Lord's army. And I'm a soldier, and he's called me to be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier, 2 Timothy chapter 2, no soldier entangles himself in the affairs of this world so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Well, what does materialism do for the soldier, the person who is in the Lord's army? It entangles him in this world. And so he gets so entangled that he can't disentangle himself. He can't remove himself from this world. That's why when Lot in Genesis chapter 19 was told by the angels that God is going to destroy this place because of the wickedness, he's going to rain fire and brimstone upon this place. Get your wife and get your daughters and let's get out of here. And the Bible said he hesitated. Why did he hesitate? because he was all tangled up in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where he had his finances. That's where he had his holdings. That's where he had his stocks and bonds. His whole life was there. And you're telling me to leave this behind? Ah, the angels had to drag him out and say, Lot, God is going to destroy this place. We have to leave now. Materialism enslaves us to the things of this world. Materialism, secondly, deters us from our mission to this world. We lose sight of our mission. We lose sight of the fact that the world is not my home. I'm just passing through. We lose sight of the fact that we we're supposed to be a soldier. Ah, in Christianity today, I'm convinced of this. We're not thinking in terms of a soldier. Listen, we are getting closer and closer and closer to the second coming of Christ. And in the last days, difficult times will come. And as our world and our nation becomes increasingly evil, we are one day closer to the judgment of God coming upon America. And some of us, we're oblivious to that. Lot was oblivious to the fact that judgment was coming upon his city. He didn't know it, and he wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready at all. And see, a soldier, a good soldier, is ready. He knows things could change at any moment. And I, I'm here on a mission, and here is my mission. And we need to remember, we're here on a mission. And it's not to amass stuff. It's not he who has the most toys wins. That's not what it is at all. It's to shine for Christ and share his story and to know that it's not about the stuff. It's about the Savior who is the one we're supposed to focus in on. Materialism deters us from our mission to this world. And lastly, and so importantly, materialism blinds us to our true riches in Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews 13 again. 
Let your character be free from the love of money. That's one word in the Greek. Free from the love of money is one word in the Greek. It means not loving silver, literally what it means. Let your character be free from that, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. What do I have? Being content with what you have. What do I have as a Christian? What do you have as a Christian? You have the God of the universe, the God who spoke the worlds into existence. You have him living inside of you by his Holy Spirit. What do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and that you're not your own for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. You have God living inside of you. And when you have God living inside of you, you have all the love you need. You have all the joy you need. You have all the peace you need. We lose sight of the fact, what do you have as a Christian? Soma said, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen, never seen the righteous forsaken nor his children begging bread. God will take care of his own. God will take care of his own. And hey, when disaster strikes America, which it will strike America, and God will cut down the uh, God of money and wealth and materialism, the scripture says, in the days of famine, we'll have an abundance. God will meet the needs of his people. You just trust him. Don't be afraid. It says, oh, I will not be afraid. What shall man do to me? God is my helper. He's going to take care of me. And I have Jesus, the monster of materialism. How do you kill the monster of materialism? Because the monster of materialism is coming after you, it's coming after me, and it can get in our hearts and we don't even know it. And all of a sudden, things become so important to us. And God was here, and all of a sudden now, God takes second fiddle, plays second place to your money and your finances and your, your well-being and all those things that we worry about. How do you kill the monster of materialism? The way you kill the monster of materialism, Matt referred to it in his prayer, you give. Giving breaks the chains of greed. You learn to be a giver and not a taker and not a hoarder. Solomon said, there is a grievous evil which I have seen under the sun, riches being hoarded by their owner to his hurt, to his misery. You give. Give, and when you give, it's given to you. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They will pour into your lap. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. You know that the goal in life is not to amass toys and amass a fortune. It's to give it. As I told you last week, you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead and make eternal friends for Christ as we preach the gospel all over this city, all over Arklatex, and all over the nation, and all over the world through television, and we see God do great and mighty things. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, with your money, your heart and your money are tied together. So here's the question. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Has there ever been a time where you've surrendered yourself to his lordship? If not, that day can be today. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender my all to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I would love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, The Monster of Materialism, is available on CD, DVD, or MP3 download when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. 
From His Heart Ministries, we have the privilege of sharing the life-changing Word of God around the world through television, radio, and online, and it's making an impact. I recently received this note from a man in India named Hadi. He writes this, I live in India and am so thankful I can see you each week. Because of the clear way you teach, I can understand God's Word so much better. I am changed. Keep it up. Thank you. We're blessed to receive letters like this often, and it's a testimony to wonderful people just like you who are supporting from his heart and enabling us to share the truth with passion and full conviction. Now, asking for support is not my strong suit, but we need your help, especially this month as we close out our fiscal year. Our goal is $150,000 by June 30th. Now, this financial target will help us expand from his heart allowing us to walk through new doors of broadcast opportunities waiting for us. So will you please pray and ask God what you could do to help us reach this challenging goal? Now remember, I take no income from From His Heart. I'm a volunteer and a monthly supporter. So every dollar you give goes directly to reaching more people with the good news of Jesus. Now for your timely support this month, we have some special gifts we wanna send you to help you in your walk with Christ. Thanks for your prayers and financial partnership. May God richly bless you. For your fiscal year end gift today, we'd like to say thanks by sending you Pastor Jeff's powerful four message series, Money Matters, how to make your money count for now and forever. Along with his companion booklet, Are You Worried About Money? Just call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org to make your gift. And thank you for standing with us to reach a lost and a hurting world. And thank you for watching From His Heart, the viewer-supported broadcast outreach of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real love.